into my new home and so I was in the process of trying to just set things up over here going forward so it's a little little eclectic by me right now but we will do our best and also oh i forgot about that and also on the note this is going to be my author's chats of the week and if you have any questions for me my co-host who will be joining in just a little bit let me know we'll be talking about books writing publishing and everything in between and i'm sorry i have a little dust in my nose part of that moving process Three, two, and one. Hey there. Hi, how are you? Doing good, how are you doing? Good, and if you hear any echo, it's because I just moved into my new place, so there's nothing on the walls, and so every room echoes right now. Oh, that's that's okay, and congratulations on moving into a new place. <laughs> Thank you, I will hopefully, before the end of it, have everything set up so I can actually have what I would view as a functioning, author's office which i'm excited about <laughs> that'll be awesome hey nander <laughs> but yeah so uh thank you for coming out and hanging out i know for you your schedules you're just one of those people who are going twenty thousand miles a minute so i am thrilled that you made some time to come out and hang out today <laughs> yeah absolutely thank you so much for asking me and i'm so glad we were able to work it out yeah and so i will let you into reintroduce yourself to anybody who might know you'd be unfamiliar. Most everybody on this platform knows you, but <laughs> let you do your introduction and what you write and we'll go from there. Yeah, so uh, I am Jason Duro. I'm a fantasy author and I've been on uh, Book Talk for, uh, I guess, over two years now. It's gone quickly, but I write the, uh, currently I'm writing the Teshavar series. I have the first two full novels and a uh, prequel novella out right now. Oh, there's the first novel right there. Let's see, I've got the, the second one right here. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's what I'm writing. I am in between books on that right now. We can talk about that as part of it, but uh, I uh, live in Florida. I go to all kinds of conventions and all kinds of stuff, uh, including uh, where we met at Dragon Con. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's great. And the fact, I mean, since the last time we did one of these, you've released that second novel. And for anybody who doesn't know, they're 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 meaty books, so it takes. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you the second one. Is here's next to my head. You can see. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you. It takes it takes a moment, but uh, I am looking forward to reading the second one. And absolutely, if you if you join into uh, any number of my lives, I've mentioned this one like so many times as a great example of this is just a fantastic book all around. So <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, you were talking about, you are, okay, we just recently published your second one, and tell, tell me a little bit about, like, how you feel having that step of your process complete now. Yes. It, uh, it's kind of funny because I, I worked on, it took about a year to get the first book written and then to get the prequel novella written, that was about two weeks. And then to get the second full novel written, that was about two years of work. And so it, it seems like I would feel like this great catharsis upon releasing it, but the only thing I can think upon releasing it is, okay, what's next? And then I just jump into the next project. There hasn't been any downtime at all for it. And <laughs> in fact, I, I stressed myself out so much when I released this one that I got sick right afterwards and I think I had the flu or something afterwards but oh uh, it's just it's been chaos <laughs> well, no one wants to like get burnout so it's and it's hard for any author to try to find a balance because uh sounds like you are the similar to me in the sense that I love to jump into the next project and constantly just go 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 but sometimes it's okay to Tell yourself you can have a break so you don't reach burnout. Now, have you ever dealt with burnout before or just physically gotten sick? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of both. I, I think uh, I think any writer who does it long enough encounters both in some way. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, during the period of writing any book, I always hit burnout during that. I hit the point where uh, the imposter syndrome starts going in and the burnout happens and you start thinking the book's awful. You start thinking that everything you've written up to that point is just garbage. You need to throw it out and start over, which I actually did with the second one. I got about 50,000 words into it and scrapped the whole book and started over. So uh, so it's it's a process. I definitely encounter that. 
And uh, down there, thank you so much for the compliment for the second book. Yes, and I'll, I'll read it out because uh, if I'm able to, if the this platform is very nice and I'm able to repurpose this on the YouTube later, they don't pop up the little comments. And it says the second one's even better than the first. So there you go. And again, I'm so excited because I do want to read that and add that to my TBR. I'm just a very slow reader and me too. <laughs> my TBR keeps like growing on me. <laughs> I, I totally understand that. I'm a slow reader as well. It um, For me, it's also that I just don't have the time to read. I Most of my reading I get done just in between doing other things or when I go to bed at night and I'll read for a little while and then I'm just out asleep. And it's kind of funny that I write books as big as I do because those are the kinds of books that take me months to read, <laughs> just like months to get through. So, um, but, but readers are getting these books and just flying through them. I don't know how people read these things as fast as they do. <laughs> I don't know. There are some power readers out there, I for sure. Now, I don't remember if I've ever asked you, do you have your books on audio? Because I know audiobook people, they'll like plug it in and like figure out how to like multitask. It's a skill that I don't have multitasking. And uh, that's one of the ways they can get through some of these bigger works where I'm like, I'm jealous. I should I should start listening to more audiobooks. <laughs> Right. I have uh, the prequel novella is on audio, and the uh, the two novels, those are two things that are on my immediate to-do list to get uh, made into audiobooks, and I'm narrating them myself. And so um, I narrated the uh, the prequel myself, and I'm doing the other two, and just everything about that feels like a mistake, <laughs> but I'm doing it. Well, I mean, you're not the only author on this platform that is going through that process of narrating books themselves, and it's one of those things, if you're comfortable with it or you have the some kind of background, which you, in a sense, do because you're also a voice actor, so right. you have way more knowledge in that kind of craft than someone like me, and that's why I pay people like you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I've worked as a uh, voiceover artist for over 10 years now, but the kind of voiceovers that I do that I've been doing all along are corporate voiceovers. It's mm -hmm. like ad work or narrating training videos or doing those kinds of things. And I haven't, I, I occasionally have done like video game or animation work, just like a little bit of that. But uh, I've done, other than my own audiobook, I've done basically no audiobook work. And what I try to do with my professional voiceover stuff is I try to do the easiest jobs that I can find for the best pay and that's not audiobook recording that stuff is hard <laughs> so mm -hmm. i um, i want to do my own books because i know how i want them to sound and everything but just the process of recording them for me is a grueling thing so i always have such respect for people who their day in day out is recording audiobooks and narrating that i just i don't know how they do it and i have such respect for them it is definitely a different skill set because i one of my narrators is at, is also a stage and TV actor and all that kind of stuff. And he said it too. He's like, anytime I do an audiobook, yours or any of the big um, tribe people, he's like, this is like, that is one of the most stressful. It is rewarding, but it's also a different amount of stress than you would expect because you're thinking it's going to be easier when it's actually not because you're doing all different voices, getting in the head spaces, doing the narration, and it's, it's, it's a feat of its own, but I see a comment saying, uh, loved your novella audio and you should continue on, so. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I just, I have to psych myself up for it and just fully plunge into it. So thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> oh, that's great. And and your fans are super fans, so I, I love that. And I am one of them, though I'm behind. I know I'm behind, but I am one of them. <laughs> <laughs> So you kind of started off talking about how you like to go to different kind of events and cons and conventions. Do you have any in the near future or what is your plan for the rest of the year idealistically or what you have you secured, if that makes sense? Sorry, that was rambling. <laughs> No, no, that's good. Uh, yeah, I, I have a few scheduled um, in May uh, coming up or the next ones. I have uh, two actually here in Orlando. I'm in the Orlando area. I have, uh, and I don't remember the exact dates, but they are in May. There's one called uh, Starfall that's going to be in Orlando. It's a first year event that is, uh, the overall theme of it is is sort of uh, Akotar, but not Akotar <laughs> because it's not an official kind of thing, but it's called Starfall. So I'll be there. I uh, will have a table. I'll be doing uh, signings 
selling and all that. Plus, I think they're going to have some panels I'll be speaking on. And then also in May, uh, I haven't actually announced this yet, and they haven't announced it yet, but I'm going to be a speaker at BookNet Fest in Orlando. And uh, I went to that just as an attendee last year and had a really good time, so I'm excited that they wanted to have me as a speaker this time. So I'm doing that. Then um, jumping ahead in uh, November, towards the end of the year, I have another event from the uh, group that's doing Starfall. They're doing a, an event in Orlando called uh, the Dance of the Dragons, and that's a two-day event where I'll be signing and selling and maybe doing panels. And then hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I'll see you at DragonCon. I'm trying as hard as I can to get a hotel room, so if, if anybody seeing this has an extra hotel room they want to offload, I'm your guy. <laughs> <laughs> But for real, but for real, because like you, you are a phenomenal speech, phenomenal speaker on various panels and you have been for a number of years. And so it would be, we would be missing you if you are unable to attend. And I hope to see you there too, because uh, I intend to be at that one and I'm waiting to hear back from a couple others, but um, I'm a slow and steady person where it's like, I maybe should apply more to more, but I always am trying to just make sure I don't overwhelm myself with scheduling mm -hmm. because I always do these grandiose behind the scenes projects as in the Kickstarter that lo I'm launching next week where that takes a lot of time and energy, but maybe yeah. it's, maybe I should do more face to face. I don't know. <laughs> It's, it's so much fun doing the uh, the conventions and doing uh, events like that. And, and I mean, you're awesome on panels as well, because we've been on panels together a few times, and you, uh, you're you a fantastic speaker as well, and I enjoy doing those with you. But the uh, the in-person events are so much fun. Uh, for one thing, I enjoy talking about writing, the process of publishing, and all that kind of stuff, and that's an opportunity to do that. But also, uh, a lot of the events are really great for uh, in-person networking with other authors and meeting readers. And uh, like last year, I went to Books, Gowns, and Crowns in Tampa, and I uh, got to hang out with a bunch of uh, authors from Book Talk there, meet a bunch of people in person for the first time that I knew on here, and I uh, just did so much great networking there, and now some of those authors I actually got into a group chat with, and every day we're constantly talking with each other and sharing strategies and telling each other what we're working on, and so conventions are perfect for that kind of thing. And I wanted to ask you about something, uh, and I won't say too much yet, because I don't know what you've said. Have you said anything? Thing publicly about any dragon con plans yet that you have i i have not said anything in particular i i filmed i think i filmed like today or yesterday and haven't posted it yet the announcement of yes i will be attending but because uh, i was waiting to hear a little bit more you know solidify on the panel panels i haven't said any more than that how about you yeah. <laughs> i won't say I, I didn't want to say anything but uh, but you you most likely have cool stuff coming up for Dragon Con for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I really hope you're there because it won't feel the same without you. And I do love that event and kind of like what you were mentioning, it's so much fun meeting so many other authors from various, various platforms, but especially Book Talk, because Book Talk people are awesome, just saying that. Yes. <laughs> I, I love it, and I uh, I love hanging out with you there. I got to see you in your first costume at Dragon Con, and we got to hang out around that. And uh, that that's always my favorite event. And I uh, have I have everything else set to go there except for the hotel room. If I can get the hotel room, then I'm perfect and everything is good. So, like I said, anybody seeing this, if you got a hotel room, I'm your guy. <laughs> That's what, hey, you never know, maybe you should post a post with uh, the handles for Dragon Con and seeing if anybody sees it and, you know, cater it that way. It may also yeah. mess, mess up your algorithm. I don't know, but that, that's ask and you shall receive. Who knows? <laughs> I, I need to manifest it. That's what I need to do. Manifest. <laughs> Goose <Rella. laughs> Okay, so let me, let me go. Let's go back to your series. And I remember, or correct me if I'm wrong, that the books of your series you were doing, was it in your big plan, three trilogies in the same universe? Okay. That's right. Yep. There's going to be, uh, there, are, uh, there are going to be side books as well, like the prequel novella. There are going to be, I'm not sure how many of those, just uh, as I get ideas, I'll write those. But planned out, I have a trilogy of trilogies. And uh, there will be three books, then there's going to be a bit of a time jump, and then the story continues with three books, and there will be another bit of a time jump, and then the final three books. So uh, we now have the first two full novels out, so the next full novel will be the completion of the first trilogy. I love it. I love it. That's so exciting. 
Yeah, I'm excited to get it out. I'm, I'm working on something that's not in the series right now as my next book because my brain just needed a little bit of a break for a bit. But I'm still, I'm uh, just constantly thinking about that third book and looking forward to getting into putting it together and writing it. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited about what I'm working on next, but also excited about the book after that, which is book three. <laughs> Hey, I don't know if the word palate cleansers re refer well to books, but it is nice because I totally get that. I'm, I mo uh, publish multiple series simultaneously, but I work on one and then I switch to the other and go back and forth. And that way kind of don't feel like um, overdoing it with any one series. And it's, it's just refreshing because then you go back and you're super ready to delve into the book again. Yeah. And I see a comment saying, can't wait for book three, especially how book two ends. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice teaser there. I appreciate that teaser. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited for book three. I know everything that happens in it. I have the rough outline of it together. I need to do like the chapter and scene outline and then actually write it. But before that, I'm doing something that's not Teshavar at all. So I, I I have friends who have done that kind of thing that they'll be writing their series and they need a break from it. They need to write something a little bit simpler, a little bit quicker. And uh, they call it their candy books. So I'm thinking of this next one as my candy book. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Now, is your candy book a similar style outside of the fact that maybe it's a little simpler or is are you jumping to a new genre as a full refresh? It's a it's an adjacent genre. I'll say that I um, I haven't talked specifically about what it is yet. It's it's kind of funny because um usually when I'm writing something, I can't talk about it at all until I finish the first draft because it totally derails me. But that also messes up my promotion for it because it's good to talk about stuff early. So with this one, I am going to start talking about it more as I get a little bit deeper into it. So I'm not going to wait until I just completely finish it before I start talking about it. But I'm not quite to that point yet. But this book is really unique in that I can give a two word elevator pitch for it and you'll understand the entire book, which is very different than anything else I've done before. And it's just there, I, if I said two words, you would know like the vibe and what it's about and everything for the book. <laughs> so, but it's, um, it is, it's a kind of historical fantasy. I'll say it that, like that. It's not a second world fantasy. It's set on earth and it's historical and it has light fantasy elements to it. I'll say that. Okay, that's fun. I love that. And uh, I, th I, I really do. I think it's great when authors change things up personally. Now, some people are like, stay in your zone, but I'm the opposite. I'm like, if you want to play around, explore your creativity. I mean, that's, writing is supposed to be fun and uh, that's kind of fun. I'm so excited yeah. for you. I know, um, I know the um, genres or subgenres that you normally write in. Have you had ideas outside of that, like to venture into other areas or things that you want to do? Well, for me, it's everything is definitely a heavy, you know, other world, second world fantasy, and it's hard for me to break out of that. Now, each series is totally different universes, and so it's all different world building, and I. Since I'm wrapping up my uh, Viking Dark Fantasy novella series this year, uh, and I'm always well ahead of my publication schedule, so I had this moment and I was like, I'm going to do a standalone for the first time. So it was my first time playing with a standalone, first time where it was a more of a romanticy, because I'm not, or I don't consider myself a romantic, it's a clean romanticy, so no, no spice. But it was also the first time where I did multiple POVs. So it was a great way to play with new things. And that one, I'm kind of like you where it's like, I'm not exactly ready to delve into and tell people what it's about yet. Yeah. I'm not at that stage yet, but it'll be fun because it is a, in many regards, very different from the vibes of my first three series. That's so exciting. I love that you're doing that and that you're kind of experimenting. And that's one of the, the great things, especially about being an indie author like we are, is we're not beholden to the requests of agents. We're not beholden to what the publisher wants us to do. If we get inspired to go off in a different direction, then uh, we can do that. And we're allowed to do that. And we can seek success in any area that our inspiration takes us to. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Sorry, I'm keeping up and I was like, I want to, I already see you. I want to know the two word teaser. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it so badly, but I, I feel like I'm still in like 
uh, I feel like whenever I write something, there's a period when the story is very fragile, and I feel like if I am not careful with it, it'll break. And talking about it is, is the surest way to break it. So if I there, I, like I can talk about it like I've been talking about it, but if I get too specific at this point, I feel like it'll it'll just shatter. <laughs> so. Hey, and here's the thing: when you get really ready to start editing and. Depending on your writing style, that could drastically change your book. That could change your pitch of your book. So what might make sense now may not make sense at the end. And so, you know, I get that. I, I definitely get the whole wait until you're ready. And kind of like you, I, I would love to figure out a better pre-marketing strategy because I'm very bad about that. I usually wait till it's like, oh, it's about to come out. Um, I, By the way, there's this book coming out and I don't know, I'm, I'm horrible at book releases, mm -hmm. absolutely horrible at them. And that's something that I would love to get better about, you know, down the line. <laughs> Yeah, the um, the book release is probably my least favorite part of writing overall. I love writing. I love interacting with readers and interacting with authors and uh, friends that I have in the community. I uh, love putting it all together. I love having released a book, but the release process is my least favorite part of anything. And I totally botched it on this last book. Uh, let's see. Got a question here. Is uh, a question in the uh, chat? Is Akathar's greatest trick going to be available in audiobook format? Uh, yes, that is uh, the next audiobook that I will be producing. Is Akathar's greatest trick, and it's going to take me a while to get it together, but I'll be recording it myself and doing all the voices and everything, so that will be available. That's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much fun, and it's I, I do I think audiobooks are fantastic because they're definitely people who. That is their format and that is all the only way they can read books and enjoy them. And so when you release them, you're reaching one, a whole new group of readers. And two, you definitely have the people who like to collect them all. Are those the book dragons? No, there's a term for it where like you want every format of your book and- <laughs> It's like like the Pokemon thing, got it. gotta have them all. <laughs> on the shelf and then the ebook while I'm in bed, you know, <laughs> collect them all. Exactly, exactly. So I, I want to have them all out there. I want to do it. Uh, the, uh, the audiobook is just the one that's taken the longest. And ever since the book first came out, I've had people asking for the audio and I've been wanting to do it. But I just, I, I think I psych myself out about how long it takes to record these things. And so I keep postponing it. But I was about to start, I was literally like the next day, I was going to be starting recording the audiobook for Akathar's Greatest Trick and I got sick. And so, of course, I couldn't record while I was sick. And so then during the time I was sick, I started working on this, on writing this next book. And so that's how I got deep into that. And so what I'm, I think what I need to do is start recording the audiobook like at night and writing during the day uh, and uh, doing that around my other work, like my voiceover work, but just work out some kind of schedule that I can actually get it done. Okay, I'm an advocate of schedules, but I am a creature of habit. So I definitely like, if I I don't sit down to write new material in the morning, it's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that is my time because afternoons are for editing and, oh, thank you, oh, thank editing you so and hopefully we see you at DragonCon and um, marketing and all that kind of stuff, posting these kind of videos, live chats. And if I get caught up in something else, as soon as the afternoon comes around, I'm like, eh, I'll just write tomorrow. <laughs> yep, yep. I've had that for sure. And that also seems to happen whenever a new really good video game comes out. <laughs> so I, I got to postpone the, so I can play the games. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. Priorities. Yep. Hey, you never know what's going to inspire your next book. And right now, Lit RPG is very popular. And you, you never know, you might all of a sudden have an idea for another spin off, another series, another. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, the the game the game that I've started playing right now, I don't know. I I would be really interested if it inspired a book because I've been playing WWE 2K24. So. Yes. <laughs> hey, the book that's about to release, well, the one I'm doing this Kickstarter and um was loosely you, people pe people read it and know they're gonna know loosely 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 inspired from my era of Yu-Gi-Oh and that's aging me how young I was but like Yu-Gi-Oh and I was just like oh I was so into it and so this is kind of like my nod to that era of my life <laughs> that's awesome and I love that you can have that as a um as a comp title you can say if you like Yu-Gi-Oh then <laughs> I 
actually would not have thought about that until you just said, because I'm bad at marketing myself. I literally <laughs> just said it and I would never have thought to use it. And I do see that um, uh, D'Artagnan was saying happened to me with Zelda. See, you never know. Video yep. games can inspire you and wrestlers in Middle Earth. <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds kind of compelling. <laughs> hey, you, know, you never know. You never know. I will admit, you can come up with the most creative ideas and you just sell it right, mm, you got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, when uh, when I started doing Akathar's Greatest Trick, I wanted to write a book about a stage magician and I also wanted to write an epic fantasy book and so I was like, <laughs> just stick them together. Hey, I love it. And I, I remember just when I was really young, I was so enamored with stage magicians and magic tricks and everything. And you know, that, that that's really fun. Yeah. It's <laughs> so funny. Moment, Baldur's Gate 3 or Temptress at the moment. I've heard a lot of, a lot of popular, um, a lot of people love Baldur's Gate. Mm -hmm. I want to play that. I, um, I've been so busy with everything else that I haven't played it. The games I've been playing lately have been games that I can easily sort of jump into and jump out of because I have so much other stuff going on. So they're kind of sessionable games, but I imagine Baldur's Gate 3 is like a full immersion thing that I, I would need to be prepared to just sort of set aside my life <laughs> at that point. <laughs> you get sucked into another world. You come back and be like, what year is this? <laughs> It'll be like the Robin Williams <laughs> thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. Yes, that would be fun. But uh but yeah, I love that. And um okay, I was going with that and I totally forgot what I was about to say. But uh, as we're talking about it, um uh, I've seen a lot of authors now getting into and I know everybody's at different stages, but getting into doing special edition books is very popular now. Is that something you've ever considered at some point? I know, you know, your books you are a feat to write in among themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I have thought about it. I've had some specific ideas about it, but I always want to be really careful about it because I feel like there's a fine line between having a really cool special edition that offers value to the readers that is something that they really would benefit from having and that I would enjoy putting out. And then on the other side of that line is just like doing something that's kind of an easy cash grab kind of thing, you know, and I want to make sure that I always stay on the sort of reader advocacy side of that line, that anything I release, I do it for the readers and not just as an easy kind of thing. And so uh, I've had some specific ideas for a special edition of Akathar's Greatest Trick. I haven't executed on that yet, but there may be something coming up with that. But uh, once I get the first trilogy out, I was thinking it might be nice to have something. I, I don't know the logistics of how I might do some kind of box set or some kind of thing like that. Um, they are way too big to do like an omnibus edition, so I couldn't do that. But um, but I, um, I've thought about maybe coming up with some kind of box set edition or something like that. But, yeah, especially now that TikTok shop is such a big thing, it's it's great for selling those kinds of special editions. And I have uh, friends, I, I won't name any names, but I have some author friends who have been using TikTok shop who are literally making tens of thousands of dollars a month on TikTok shop with special editions of their books. It's just wild. That is really cool. Because yeah, that's something that I was trying to decide if, uh, because I do have one complete series and it's four books and it's, it's at the point where I absolutely love the covers and I know I keep getting people who tell me they love the covers, but I've been deciding like, are they kind of going out of style? Should I refresh it? But then I was like, well, maybe it's about time to do a special edition for me to like, see how that is, do something really nice, yeah. um, celebrate the fact that I have a complete series in a little different fashion and be it a Kickstarter thing exclusive or something a little more permanent, like you're saying the TikTok shop, um, which a lot of people are using. It's, uh, it's just something I've been kind of considering, so. Yeah, yeah, I think it could be a great idea, especially if you want to uh, to sort of experiment with your covers and try something different and just see, because covers definitely can drastically change the trajectory of a book when uh, when it's on Amazon or when it's on wherever. So I, I think, I, I say go for it. Thank you. Now <laughs> the, the question is, when do I find the time to do the research and the... <laughs> That's, we, we need to schedule and promote for each other. That's what we need to do. <laughs> yes, I love cross promotion is like one of my favorite things. <laughs> I love doing it. And I don't I don't even remember if you ever did one. I don't think you have. Did you? I had to go check. It's been a moment. Um, 
did one of my written interviews because I, again, I love cross promoting and uh, sh doing that, like shining the light on other authors. And I also do oh. written interviews with people. Oops, you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Sorry, I had a timer saying, "Hey, your dog needs his late night snack." He, I have a dog. He's very big and he has acid reflux, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> he needs a late night snack to settle his tummy every night. <laughs> Thankfully, my husband has that. <laughs> got it. Got it. Well, hopefully, he'll enjoy his snack tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to turn that timer off. And I see a question. A question for both of us: How do you source your cover artist? Ooh, great question. Okay, do you want to start this one? Um, either one you can start if you want to or whichever well for me i've done it different ways and my one thing is always do your research because no matter where you get them or where you're looking you can have some great ones you can have some not so great ones so always be cautious and know what you're getting into and i have one i was very fortunate that my first cover artist who's now done two of my series i did get through fiverr 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 but that is a platform where you're going to get a lot more duds than the diamonds in the rough. So just be cautious with that platform. But again, do your research and be prepared on that one because they are on the more for affordable side. Be willing to test and pay for a couple that you may not end up wanting. Now, on the other side of things, I've I actually found my other cover artist on a Facebook group um, for cover artists and they show displays of uh, pre-mades, so giving you good examples of what they've done in the past and finding, I found one that I really liked her style and went to her website and looked at her other, um, her custom one she's done for other, looked at her background and saw that she had been hired by some of the big five companies too. So doing the research and that's how I hired her, but that was through a Facebook group. But there are platforms like ReadZ that I know there are on there. I haven't used them, but uh, asking other authors. That's another thing. So what about you? Yeah, uh, I have only worked with one designer before I uh, work with uh, Francisca Stern. She online, her website is, uh, I believe it's coverdungeon.com is her website. But I initially found her through 99designs, which is another uh, site you can source authors through. I found her on there and I liked her style. I contacted her directly. You can do like a bidding process on there, which I don't uh, like that as much. But yep, that's, uh, that's her art right there. She also did uh, this cover here. I'll hold it up. If you can see it but um, I don't like the bidding thing that they do on there because it yep. can cause a lot of artists to do a lot of unpaid work and I feel like artists should always get compensated for their yep. work so I contacted her directly and worked with her directly to um, do the Akathar's Greatest Trick cover and then she did the Lysandra's Deepest Fear one for me I um, I actually let's see I've got the novella here I did the uh, prequel novella cover myself because this one was never really intended to be sold I was just gonna have it as a freebie ebook that I gave away but people wanted something to put on their shelf so I used the um, ebook cover that I made to uh, to uh, put that together and do the paperback but uh, Fran has been uh, fantastic to work with and I, I did all the sort of vetting that you talked about as far as looking to see if she was reliable all that but yeah she's the only designer that I've worked with to this point yeah, and that's the thing. And if you know or are familiar with an art, uh, author, especially on platforms like this, and you love their covers, you can you can ask. Now, not everybody will tell you because some people will kind of like, I want to keep my, <laughs> my sources, my sources. But usually, from what I know, they'll be happy to say if they loved a you know a cover designer, they want to support them because it, like you said, it's another artist who you know want you want to support their works. Right. And uh, just ask. Now, do your research. Know your genre. Know your subgenre. Uh, know what's trending because you want to be that sweet spot where you're similar enough, where everybody knows what your book's supposed to, you know, vibe with, but unique enough to be eye catching. And that's like that sweet spot. But do your research because my first time I attempted it, my cover design was absolutely wrong, and I had to redo it because I thought I knew what I was supposed to be doing and didn't and so that's why i had to find someone who was more familiar with the subgenre i was writing in yeah yeah when you uh, work with a designer out of curiosity uh, how much direction do you usually give your designer versus relying on them to come up with the design uh do, well i blah, blah, blah. the first one her her platforms olivia pro designs and she did my incarn saga series so my new adult shifter war based series and she did my viking series that one i've given her more um 
more of what I kind of wanted, yet she will also kind of add her flair to it as well. But I definitely kind of uh, tell more or less what I have in mind. Now, my other one, I live a little, leave a little bit more flex because I know, um, you know, she's been work working for years in publishing and, she, you know, that she's familiar with this genre. So we work back and forth and working in series, once I get the idea of the first book, it's really easy to then replicate it in a way that it looks like a series going forward. And uh, for the book that's uh, about to launch for the Kickstarter next week, it's the fourth book of my young adult uh, adventure portal fantasy epic questing uh, series. And I know the first one she came out with looked gorgeous, but it was a very white background. And I looked at the three of the series together and I was like, I need more color. It's too white. It just doesn't flow with the series. And so we revamped it and fit it back in. So it looks a lot nice, you know, nicely. Yeah. And a good cover designer should work with you to an extent. They shouldn't be like, this is it. <laughs> yep. Yep. I agree completely. It sounds like you have a great working relationship there. That's awesome. And That's hi there. <laughs> I like doing that, but then again, I am a control freak. <laughs> that's, that's me too. That is why I'm an indie author. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> absolutely yes. And talking about uh, being in control of things, uh, the new wave of all these authors moving into direct sales, something I began right at the end of last year and opened my own bookshop on my website slash a TikTok shop. And you're stepping into that too. So how is it going with for you for your TikTok shop? It goes really well when I remember to promote it. When I don't remember to promote it, it kind of dies off. I still get some sales from it, but when I remember to post videos and have links and really show stuff off and actually do advertising like I should be doing for it, I get a good number of sales through there, and it's it's been a really good revenue generator because the uh, the profits through there obviously are better than selling through Amazon or somewhere else. But, uh, but like I said, when, when I forget, because the kinds of videos that I really enjoy making are not the promotional ones, they're ones talking about the writing process, the publishing mm -hmm. process, all that. When I do those and I kind of uh, neglect the promotional ones, then the sales really drop off. <laughs> but I've, I've got to strike some kind of balance there. Yeah, I, I fully agree. And for me, it's there are a lot of rules of what you can and can't say, what, you know, if you're trying to dabble with if you're used to doing trending sounds and then you have to be a little more cautious now, it's, it's, there is a little learning curve and I'm still trying to figure out that sweet spot when I do that because I feel like I don't want to be preaching to my longtime followers, but you also want to be reaching new people and saying and letting people know who may not be aware, this exists. Get a exactly. signed copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I uh, I have my shop. I actually started a second account to uh, to host my shop, and then I have my current account, this account, as an affiliate of that, so that I can link directly to it. But I wanted to separate it out so that I could still make the kinds of videos I love making on this account, and I wouldn't have to change things up. But uh, then I have the second account that I need to make more videos on there to promote stuff. But I just have fallen off of that somehow, so I need to get back onto that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that does remind me because what I, what I do is I'll film one for this account and then if it looks like it's doing okay, I'll download it, re-upload it with, without the like little, the little mark onto my bookshop account. So, you know, if it's, it's book, truly only book selling related. <laughs> that's, that's a really good idea. I need to learn from you. <laughs> Repurpose things. Yeah. Work yeah. smarter, not harder. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> And I see a comment saying you too. Oh, thank you. Wonderful humans taught me everything I needed to know to be a successful uh, as an author. Oh, that's you so probably much. not so fully true. I'm sure a lot of that was on you. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I learned so much from, from authors that took a few steps before me when I came into it. And so my whole goal with TikTok and Book Talk all along has been sort of just to pass that along and to, uh, I, I don't feel like I'm like, I'm definitely not like bestseller level, like the biggest author in the world or anything. But if I can be just like a couple of steps up the ladder, a couple of rungs up the ladder and reach down and give somebody a hand, pull them up those couple of rungs so they can be where I am, that's what I always want to do. 
Yes, and I know I've I picked your brain multiple times about things because, uh, yeah, I'm always asking other authors, how do you do this? Has this worked for you? What do you think about this? <laughs> yeah, and that's that's what the community is all about. I love that about book talk and about uh, the author community in general, and um, especially about um, when when we were able to meet in person for the first time and uh, hang out and all that. Uh, that's uh, that's what uh, makes it all fun. It does. It does. And I, I have enjoyed kind of building this uh, author to author, writer to author, reader to author relationships on platforms like this. And then it's so, so cool when you actually meet them in person, you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I've seen happen over the last couple of years since I've been on BookTok that I think is really cool and really inspiring is I will see people who will comment on my videos and they will find me on here and they'll start watching my videos. They will be readers and they'll get my book and they uh, will start reading my books. They'll get into it and we'll post uh, comments there. And then over time, I, I can almost predict it at this point who it's, who's going to do this. I'll start seeing them comment slightly different kinds of things. And over time, I see them turn into authors when they started out as readers and they've come into this community and see these videos and all this kind of stuff. And I've seen so many people that come in as readers that just sort of naturally metamorphosize into authors. <laughs> and I just, I love seeing that happen. I absolutely love that. That is the goal. <laughs> it is, and it's it's something that I think before places like this, it was the idea of being an author was such a distant thing. There was like there was a separation, a wall, this kind of magical force field that you know you didn't know how to get there, and you maybe not didn't even think about it. But now, so many people talk so candidly about here's the mistakes I made, here's my journey. Yeah. Yep. Here's Absolutely. how what I think has been working so far and everybody's just like feels a little more comfortable stepping into it than I know when I jumped into this, I didn't have those resources or didn't know about those resources. And I do think it's really nice because it's a lot easier and people are so willing to, again, help others along to their success. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I see um, but JJ has come in. Hello. <laughs> I wanted to say hi to her. But uh, yeah, I, I love uh, the the amount of help that is given out. And that's one of the things I love in general about indie publishing as opposed to traditional publishing. Traditional publishing has what I feel like are so many arbitrary gatekeepers in the way because mm -hmm. you can write a book. Someone can write a book. It can be an amazing book that would inspire people. It could be people's favorite book. And you have to jump in traditional publishing so many hurdles to get it into print. First of all, you have to find an agent that uh, likes the book, that feels like they can get it to an editor. You have to get, hit them on a day when they're having a good day, they're in a good mood. If they're not, then pfft, that just cuts you off right there. Once you get the agent, they have to get in touch with an editor and a publisher that the whole thing happens again. And there are just so many points along the way in traditional publishing that one person can be having a bad day or cannot be in the mood for the kind of book you are trying to present. And then they just swipe you out into the slush pile and you're done. And so many authors give up that way. They don't publish their books. And it's tragic to think about how many books have died on the path to traditional publishing that would have been amazing books if the author had been able to go into indie and just publish it. Mm -hmm. That's very true. And, uh, and here's the thing about indie. Yes, it is all on you to an extent. So it is all on you to make your book as good as it can be, or if you're just trying to quickly put something out there, it is on you. Now that means you have to step up and really love your project and make sure you do right by whatever your book is because there are so many fantastic authors here that are just so published. Yeah. Absolutely. And the uh, the thing that I spend the most money on in publishing, I mean, indie publishing does cost money up front. It's an investment, a monetary investment that doesn't work for everyone. So I completely understand when people need to not do indie because they can't afford it or they're not uh, they're not interested in doing that side of the business. But um, the thing that I put the most money into each time is the cover because that's the first thing readers see. That's what stands out and grabs people's attention. So the uh, the cover is always where my biggest investment goes to make things look as professional as possible. 
And um, I know from uh, from some other people that I've heard from, they invest more in editing or things like that. It just depends on the areas where you feel like you have strengths or where you need help and just knowing where to invest to make that work out the best. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and I see that uh, comment by DE saying, uh, the deal breaker for me was how little profit I would keep with traditional. And that is true. It's, it is shocking because even with still publishing, it's, you don't make a lot. And when people hear like, oh, that book was $15, that was a $30 hardcover or whatever. And they're thinking, I was like, that, most of that doesn't go to the author when it's traditional. Yeah. And even self-publishing, a lot doesn't. <laughs> so that yeah. is another reason why a lot of us are making those pushes to do direct sales, because we get just a little bit more and that is fantastic. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It's, it's um, funny. I, I try to, um, I, I don't make a ton per book that I sell. I uh, try to make it reasonable for the readers to uh, do, but because the books that I write tend to be so huge, the printing costs are so expensive for me and especially with hardcovers and things like that. So my margins are pretty slim on those, but I'm, I'm hoping to build up into volume. And then, like you said, doing the direct sales through TikTok shop and things like that, that makes all the difference in the world. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, it, it really does. And authors, I know there's some people who love the idea of reading for free, but we need to pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> we love our books. We still probably going to write books, but you know, it's nice to, you know, be able to, uh, buy dinner and be like, good for us. We spent like five years on this project. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, I, um, if, if people do want to read for free, I'm all for people using libraries and things like that because they can get our books and libraries if they request from their libraries and they order it from, uh, from Ingram or from wherever they can get it into the library. And uh, I, that's actually uh, for my audiobook that I have out. That's where most of my listens come from. It's from libraries that carry it and people will listen through the Libby app or something like that. And I get a little bit of money each time they listen to that. It's not, of course, as much as if they bought the audiobook and did that, but uh, they, they do pay out a little bit each time somebody listens to it so that works out see okay that's what i'm going to talk to you because i am i've started moving the process towards wide for my books and it's going to be a very slow process but <laughs> one of the questions was how do i take and how do i deal with audiobooks going wide so if you figured some of that out like the libraries maybe messaging you behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's it's easy to do. All you have to do is uh, distribute the book, the audiobook through um, Findaway Voices, and they'll put it into libraries and they'll put it uh, wherever, which Findaway Voices has had some weird stuff with some of their terms and conditions that have raised eyebrows. Uh, people uh, felt like that some of the terms would allow them to train AI models using voices, mm -hmm. things like that. They have tried to clarify some about that. Uh, they're owned by Spotify. And oh, so yeah. there's been some concern about that. But uh, it's worked out well for me so far. I mean, maybe they're using my voice to train AIs. I don't know, but I'm able to get my audiobooks to people who might not otherwise be able to get them. So it's worked out well for me. And that's good because, like, I know there are a couple, they're not that many at this moment, but there are a handful of companies that find a way being one of them do distribute. And I just, that was my, one of my other questions was like, who do you use and all that stuff? Because there are others as well. And as we all don't like reading fine print, it's smart to do that because, you know, if you are uncomfortable, it's something to be aware of when you're making those decisions. And at some point I have to do all that research. <laughs> Again, yeah. where is this time coming from? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I see, how do I distribute a free audiobook if it's a Kickstarter reward? Now, that's something I, I do not know. I've not put uh my audios on kickstarter again haven't done the audio part at all but i know authors to do that so you would have to find an author who's done that before specifically and ask you know what here uh, here's one for you um z uh zsd monty because he just ran a kickstarter for specifically to turn his books into audio so if anybody asks check him out on this platform i can i can actually answer that one uh, oh, okay. because 
Sorry, take them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. I um, I haven't done a Kickstarter, but I when I did my audiobook, I did distribute ARC copies of the audio to people that they could listen to it and then leave reviews. And for that, um, Book Funnel actually has a new audiobook distribution Woo! model that they do direct audiobook distribution. And at the time that I did it, it was still in beta. I don't know if it's still in beta now, but I requested to get into that, and they let me in. And so uh, they either still have it in beta or it might be widely available now, but Book Funnel, uh, which I also use for distributing uh, like my reader magnet for people who sign up for my newsletter, things like that, um, you can upload an audiobook and then provide people with a uh, special link that's specific to them. And Book Funnel also has all kinds of tools that you can distribute it using their mailing tools and all that. So, um, so Book Funnel is where I would recommend to look for that. Good to know because uh, I, I just started using BookFunnel to distribute ebooks directly on my website. So now it's making me question. I wonder now if I could put my audios books as a direct sales through you that. Probably can. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really think you can. And they're they're super easy to work with. Their support is awesome. And every time I've had a question about anything, they've been really quick and really responsive with it. So um, so yeah, that's um, that's a definite legit possibility for direct audiobook distribution. And they, they were really nice people, true, because I, I went to what is now becoming Author Nation in the November, but it's like the, it was 20 bucks, 50K. Right. And there's one day where it's Vendor's Day. <laughs> you meet all, everybody who has their finger somehow in indie publishing and Book Funnel was there. And I actually got to talk to some of the people I took a introduction class with the week before. And I was like, hi. And they're like, oh, I remember you. And it's just, it's, they're just nice people on that. Uh, that business. So, but as we are rounding the hour and I'm, I'm losing track of time, let me ask a couple of my basic questions. So okay. we've kind of dabbled with it, but where can people buy your books? Like, obviously we have now the TikTok shop, but like, where can people find them and what formats? So, yeah, just, so um, I have, um, I'll, I'll hold up the um, visual props here. I have um, paperbacks of all of my books that you can get these uh, through Amazon. That's where I recommend that uh, if you're just buying regular paperbacks, I recommend those through Amazon because they have the best uh, distribution for those and the best prices on those. I had to mark them up elsewhere. You can also, you can get them at other places like Barnes and Noble online. You can get them at like Walmart online, uh, other pretty much any other uh, online store other than Target. I don't have them in Target, but uh, I have those. I have the hardcovers are also in those same places. I recommend Amazon for these as as well but if you want to get signed copies of any of those then you can go to my TikTok shop and I have the signed copies of all of those in there so if you don't care about signed I recommend Amazon if you do want signed then my TikTok shop is is where you can do it and what is your TikTok shop's name since you said this particular handle is your per your regular handle I I, I yeah <laughs> right right um, I believe it is my name and then books at the end. I haven't used it enough to, <laughs> to remember, but if you go to this one, if you go to this account on the profile page, there's a little shopping icon thing. You can tap that and uh, it'll take you into it so you can find it directly from this account. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because that's one of the things that I, oh, thank you. Um, I have to be better about because I'm like, oh, I have a TikTok shop. I'm like, well, technically it's not you know, this handle, so I have to be like, it's either at face for your press. If you're going to ask me to spell that, that's a little complicated. I usually just be like, go to the link in my bio. You'll find my shop actually on the website, on my websites, what I can actually do eBooks too. So that's one thing that I, I found that the TikTok shop doesn't at this moment allow eBooks um, okay. distributed. They only do print. And, uh, but on my website, I can do eBooks. And hopefully now future can be audio too. This is exciting. Thank you for this tidbit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think you all can definitely do that. So check with Book Funnel. They should be able to set you up. Because I guess now I'm like Shopify Book Funnel. Ooh, I like this. I, I'm learning the system. It is, it's complicated, but I'm learning it. Now, uh, let me also ask outside of Book Talk, where can people find and follow you? So, website, newsletter, other socials, that kind of stuff. 
Right, right. I uh, My website is just my name. It's jasonduro.com, and I have all my links there. Um, from my book talk account, I have a link to my link tree that has all my socials. It has everything pretty much everywhere uh, at uh, Instagram and at threads and pretty much anywhere else I am. Uh, the same name that I have on TikTok. I'm Jason Duro author, and so uh, I have those the, the social platforms where I'm most active. Uh, TikTok is number one. I love doing the video content. I'm starting to repurpose that, uh, which is your word. <laughs> I'm starting to use that to uh, go on Instagram because I have an Instagram. I want to grow it more, but I never know what to put on there. So I'm just kind of repurposing some stuff from TikTok to put on Instagram. Uh, I had a Twitter back when it was a normal platform. I don't use that anymore. And now for my uh, my text-based social media stuff, I uh, use threads a lot. I really like that. And okay, so, how do you like that? Because that's something I've not dabbled with. Again, we only have so much time in the day and it's just, is it worth the extra effort? <laughs> it's, overall, it's a smaller population on there, but the book community has been much more interactive with me on threads than it ever was on Twitter. And so for me, I, I feel like if I were trying to reach just like a mass audience, it's not as big as Twitter would be, but I have sort of ethical problems with Twitter and I don't feel good about using Twitter in general. And so I've moved away from there and Threads, has, it has a, a really good author community on there. It has a really good reader community and it seems like it's continually growing. So I, um, I've i kind of gone all in on Threads for my uh, micro blogging platform of choice. And so I, I like it a lot. And thank you so much for sending these gifts over. I'm seeing these pop up here. Good to know. <laughs> well, these are little, little fun icons that pop up uh, because of people. Thank you so much for these. And uh, yeah, sorry, I see a question about Echo. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, video live that just moved and because there's like nothing on the walls of my house, every room is echoing because there's nothing to muffle the sound. So that could be it. And hopefully I'll be alleviating that when I hang up some stuff. <laughs> It doesn't sound bad. I, I can hear it. it. just sounds like you're in a room, so I, I think it's fine. <laughs> a very vast echoey room. No, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but, uh, but there, and for you as well as anybody else, this is one of my, my third of the three questions I always want to ask. Is there any topic that you wanted to cover that I haven't covered or any questions that you had that we haven't been able to answer? And that goes for anybody listening in tonight as well. Oh, um... I've been just enjoying the conversation. Uh, I, I'd be interested in hearing if anybody in the comments has some questions. I'd love to answer those if they if they have something to ask. Yeah, that, that rapid fire Q and A, which I I did this. I did a podcast interview. It was so funny. They had like this the end thing. It was like a rapid fire question, and they were just going off the wall. And I'm like, I can't. I have to like think. Before I speak. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm like that. Sometimes I can be on and answer questions pretty quickly. Like uh, when when we have done the uh, the live panels in person together, I, uh, we we've had to kind of be on for those. But sometimes I need a minute to think. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it is it is, and especially if they're a little off the wall versus the mainstream stuff. But yeah. how about this one? What is your most satisfaction that you, or the biggest satisfaction you get about being a writer author scenario oh um it is the biggest satisfaction is honestly when i see uh, and we're not supposed to look at reviews but i look at reviews and when i see a review that comes through that i it's it'll be like a really detailed review a really positive one that i feel like the reader got what i was trying to do when i feel like the reader connected with what I, the message that i was trying to put out there and that has fortunately happened for me pretty quickly with the new book that uh, this one is uh, has a lot of themes in it that i wasn't sure if people were going to connect with and it kind of uh, goes into a little bit more that I, i'm trying to talk generally so i don't spoil anything but it goes a little bit deeper thematically than the first one did. And uh, seeing reviews from people who I feel like totally got what I was trying to do, that was so gratifying that honestly, when the first reviews came in from that, I, I felt almost like weepy <laughs> when I saw that because I'd been working on it so hard and I just didn't know if I was going to completely whiff on it or if people were going to get it. And when uh, when I realized that people were getting it, it was just so gratifying. That's that's the best feeling for me. But uh, what what about for you? Oh, I love the answer. 
I, okay, most gratifying thing, I don't know, I do think it's, it's something about when you have, and it is, it's kind of along the lines of reviews, but not necessarily that, when a reader reaches out to you and just, you know, asks you some in-depth question or just wants to specifically make sure you, they know, you know how, um, how much they appreciated the book. It is that, those are like those good warm vibes and just those, like you said, they, 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 they pull at your heartstrings. They're like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess for both of us, it kind of boils down to having some kind of reassurance that the stuff we do, the stuff we create matters. I think mm -hmm. that's at the core of it. And uh, I'll, I'll go as far as to say I also like the, the comments when someone's like, why did you unalive this character? How dare you? I love that person so much. I'm like, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> It's 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 kind of funny because I whenever I have to off a character that is like a good guy in a book, I never feel good about it. I don't like upsetting people, but I keep doing it. <laughs> and and um, we had talked before about um, not to have a tangent, but we talked about Noble Bright books before and mm -hmm. about how you write Noble Bright. And I was trying to decide if mine were more and more as things progress. I kind of. Feel like I might not be noble bright. <laughs> it's okay. It, it kind of, the light's dimming. The the brightness is dimming. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I, I I like without giving anything away. I can say pretty easily, and this is, uh, has been in reviews and everything that Lysandra's Deepest Fear, the second book in the series, is a significantly darker book than the mm -hmm. first one. It's not just all all gloom and doom through the whole thing, but it's significantly darker. I think of it as uh, as sort of the uh, the dark middle chapter of the first trilogy. And so, uh, I, I, as I was looking at it after publishing it, I was like, I don't know if I can call this Noble Bright. <laughs> hey, that's Noble Bright. You can have characters that go down for the count, but yeah, yeah it's the overall, overall vibe of the universe and the point of view of like the main character or characters that kind of determines it. But that's why I'm like, I have a Noble Bright group. And I have a couple series that are on the darker side because it is a little more grim. And uh, not to say that I want all the characters to unalive, but it just depends on the story. <laughs> yep, yep. And, and it's interesting when you have sort of a combination of characters, you maybe have some characters in the same book that some characters would belong in Noble Bright and then some characters would belong mm -hmm. in Grimdark and then you just kind of slap them together in one story, just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. <laughs> Who comes out? I love that. And I did see I did see this question, so I want to make sure we hit it up. So when you sell your books wide, can you choose where to sell, like what store it's going in or not? And um, I know you, you've been selling yours wide, so you're probably the better one to answer this. I think I know the answer, but I'll, I'll pass this on to you. Yeah, um, when you sell wide, I, I don't have all my ebooks wide, even though I'm not in Kindle Unlimited. My ebooks are primarily just on Amazon, but my print books are wide, and um, I distribute them through Ingram Spark. But uh, I do through Ingram Spark and through KDP. KDP distributes my books just to Amazon. They say they can distribute wide elsewhere, but in practice that doesn't work as well when you have KDP distribute wide. Uh, so I use Ingram Spark for distributing wide outside of Amazon. And when you do that, in general, they will put the books just everywhere, but there are a few cases where you can say yes or no that you do or don't want your books to go into a store. Like, for example, Target uh, recently, uh, over the last year or so, uh, showed up on Ingram Spark as something you can opt into or out of because Target has a lot of uh, what I consider to be uh, kind of combative policies towards indie authors. And because of that, and because it would be too much of a risk to distribute there, I don't sell through Target. But in general, when you go wide through Ingram, they just distribute to everybody they can, unless it's one of those off cases like Target where they give you a choice. And I know when it comes to, and that's great for print, and Ingram Sparks, I think, does also the ebooks if you so choose. But there are a lot of authors who utilize other distribution things for ebooks, specifically like Draft to Digital, that again allows you to go, you know, to multiple places. Some people, and this is the method I'm trying to follow, it, uh, will pick and choose for ebooks which place you want to sell directly on ourselves and then use some site like Draft2Digital to get everything else. 
because everybody has a different percentage and cut and sometimes if you want to make that extra step for the extra work and that's what it's, why it's taking me forever to like set up all these specific storefronts on the nook the kobo the google play and stuff like that they'll give you a little higher cut of profits if you go that route versus draft a digital to them or Ingram Sparks or uh, something else. So it's, you have options, but yes, in the end, the point is, yes, you can choose who you want to an extent. Right. And through all, I, I do use draft to digital for the ebook of my novella. That's the only ebook I have that's wide. And that's just because I already distribute it with my newsletter and do that kind of stuff. And draft to digital, if I recall you, uh, like you're saying, you can sort of check and uncheck stores that you want to go into and uh, can sort of set it up that way. You can also do that with uh, audiobook distribution through find away voices. You can check and uncheck the stores that you do or don't want to go into for that. I pretty much just check everything on that and just let it go wherever because I'm, yeah I'm, I'm all for just audio everywhere <laughs> yes yes and that's that's yeah that'll definitely be a step for a couple of my audiobook series where I'll take them direct and then I'll have one that I'm holding I'll be holding exclusively through um audible just because and I'll just kind of use it as a comparison and see cause again we we test and we have to figure out what works for us and also something that works for one person may not work for someone else it just there's so so many things that just have to play. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the experimentation is half the fun sometimes. <laughs> yes, yes. So, okay. So, um, to refresh people who are jumping on a little now, you are going to be in a couple of events locally for you in Orlando in the next few months. So, if you want to see Jason face to face, um, what were the events again? Yeah, um, in May, I'm going to be in Orlando at um, an event called Starfall and at Book Net Fest. And I will, I'll have more information about both of those going up on my account. I'll also have it on my website. And then in November, I'm going to be at an event in Orlando called Dance of the Dragons. And then hopefully at the end of August, beginning of September, I'll be at DragonCon with you. Crossing fingers. I really am. I really am. <laughs> Me too. I, I'm dying to go back. I, I, I go every year, and this year is the year that the Hotel Hunger Games failed me, so I, I have to find a hotel room. I feel like there has to be like a forum or chat or something about specifically for, because it's such a big conference. If anybody hasn't doesn't know, it's a huge con, and uh, I don't know. I feel like there should be some chat somewhere about stuff like that where you might, you might, might find something, hopefully. Yep. There's there's a Facebook group specifically for Dragon Con rooms, and I've I've posted in there, told people I need it, and I'm just waiting with my fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, yes, crossing fingers. But uh, and that's something I I do. I want to make sure I do better. Go to some more of these events, and I'm trying to uh, being in the Atlanta area where Dragon Con is in the Greater Atlanta area. I'm um, trying to pay attention because the more I listen from the other authors in the region, the more I'm finding out these uh, other conventions, which I'm like, hmm, maybe I should try to get into some of them. Like there's one that's called Jordan Con, as in the author of Wheel of Time. And so it's very epic fantasy related, which I'm like, that would be fun to do. I would have to wait a year to apply. There's another one called Multiverse Con, which I was like, I have a multiverse book. <laughs> That would be awesome. I don't know if I'm going to get in this year. I kind of threw a last minute application to that one, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I hope you do. And I'm going to keep an eye out for where you're going to end up because I, I highly recommend doing as many events as you can within budget because they can get kind of wild with the budget if you have to uh, pay to go up to a bunch of them. But uh, within budget, I say as many as you can do is great. Oh, here's a good question for you. I think, okay, again, I think I know the answer, uh, but you may also have a better way to say it. Um, if you have time, I have an ACX question. Why do they require a table of context for the audio file? Now, I think I know the answer. Do you want to answer this one or you want me to try? <laughs> I'm I'm not sure about this. I I did um, do my audiobook on ACX, and then I also did I did ACX to distribute to Audible and Amazon, and then I did Find Away Voices for everywhere else. And I um, when I produced it and put it up, I I don't remember making a table of contents audio file for mine. Okay. I got it then. So <clears throat> I was wondering how it worked for you. So because I'm a person who hires other narrators, the reason why um, they do a table of contents on my end of it is because when the narrator's uploading files, each of the thing items is a file. So they'll do chapter by chapter. If you're adding, if you have, I sometimes have books with epigraphs or prologues, I put that in as well. And they have to upload each of those individually as files. 
and then ACX puts it together and smushes it and then comes out. So it's not like a ebook where people are going to click and select what chapter they're jumping to, but it's a way for the narrator to make sure they're not missing anything. So I thought that was the case, but I've never talked to someone who did it themselves. So that's why I was wondering. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense because yeah, the interface is just like, it's, it's kind of a form that you just upload file after file to. It takes a while to get them all uploaded. And if I, if I hadn't been the author and it was just the narrator and I didn't know all that, then uh, I, I might've been lost doing that. Uh, we've got another comment here. Let's see. Um, Upload all myself when my narrator didn't record that part. So I, again, that's, that's how I think um, it's set up. If the only, well, I wonder, the, either you can go and contact ACX and see what they say or work around is if it's one giant file, just put a chapter one or the title and it'll be make just a slot for one file. Maybe that'll give away. What will happen is when you get to the point where you're ready to publish, quote unquote, ACX will do the background checks and make sure everything they need it to, you know, the, the way it's order not organized and everything on their end is right and matches correctly or also come back to you and be like, you need to switch it up a little bit. So that yeah. may be a question you want to contact ACX just to make sure it, how it's going. And I see a comment also popping up saying it's Jason. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, how's it going? <laughs> see, I told you, you got, you got a huge fan group and it is fantastic. <laughs> I, I am just so appreciative for everyone who's read my books and follows my videos and has found me here on Book Talk. Uh, Book Talk really has made all the difference for my author career in the world. I, I had my first books out before I came to Book Talk and I had no readership. And after coming here and meeting folks and getting the word out, that's made just all the difference and I'm so appreciative for that. Yay! It is so much fun. I absolutely love it. Well, unless there's any other last minute questions, I will round, wind this event down. <laughs> and uh, I know Jason, you and I will be chatting behind the scenes periodically. And again, regardless of the Dragon Con situation, we will see each other again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> it may just have to be me jumping down to Florida and hanging at one of your local uh, book events because Florida has a lot of them, especially in Orlando and uh, area. I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, and we're getting more and more. There's a group called Alexia Events that just started up towards the end of last year that they are specifically doing um, fantasy book events in Orlando, and they have been doing more and more. They uh, they did one called Sinful in Orlando last year um, in October. They're doing the uh, Starfall one that I'm going to. They're doing the Dance of the Dragons one, so they're just doing more and more events, and they are really cool. They, uh, they do really good stuff. Okay, well, I'll have to poke, poke your brain about some of that going forward because you do have to plan these well in advance in the sense, depending on the applications and all that kind of stuff. And that's another thing to add to my schedule to remember to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll try to remember to poke you with the information. <laughs> Thank you. Because it's kind of like, again, going back to what we talked about earlier, it is that do we pre-market a book before it comes out? Because the answer is probably we should. Of course. I definitely I should have. <laughs> Terrible that. That's why I'm doing a Kickstarter. So if anybody likes Kickstarters and likes young adults, uh, epic fantasy, again, the noble bride, the quests and adventure, and um, in a magical multiverse, check me out next week. <laughs> Go do it. Go and follow her. <laughs> and again, if you want to get signed copies of these fantastic books, check out Jason's TikTok shop. And do the same with hers. Go get her books too. <laughs> See, we that need to promote market. each other. See, yeah, I did a marketing thing. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> you know, I'll stick her for myself, that gold star. Anywho, thank you everyone for coming out and chatting with us tonight and hanging out and giving us some great questions to try to answer. Hopefully we answered them well. And thank you, Jason, for coming out and hanging out. <laughs> I am so glad to be able to, and it's funny, this is the only live that I've done that's planned in advance, the only one that I've done like this in probably most of a year. I, the, all the other lives have just been impromptu, but I was able to carve this out, and I was so happy when you asked me. I'm glad because I miss talking with you, and one time a year to see you is not enough. <laughs> Likewise, and I'm going to do my very best to be able to see you in person in a few months, so we'll see how that goes. Crossing fingers. And thank you everybody for hanging out and have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday.
it is Tuesday, right? What day are we on Tuesday? I think, what year is it? <laughs> it's the moving brain. But thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.